we're going to look at a new feature in Google Sheets called Timeline that takes project information like this with starts and end dates and turns it into a Gantt chart, basically a timeline with cards for each row and you can have a lot of extra details on those cards. So in your sheet, you first off need to have a valid start date and an end date or a duration. You also have to have a column for your card title and that's going to appear in bold at the top of your card. You also want to have a column for details and those will appear after the title on your card. And if you want to group your cards into sections like I have here, the different project phases, you can add a column for your grouping. And similarly, you can have a column to color code the cards with, or you can base the color coding off one of the existing columns. So let's take a look at how I would set this up. The first and most important thing is to make sure your dates are valid dates. The way I like to do this is with data validation. So I'm going to select my two date columns. I'm going to go to data, data validation, and I want to choose not list from a range, but date and choose is a valid date and click save. The cool thing about this is when I go to enter more data on my sheet here, when I double click on one of the cells I just applied that data validation to, I get a calendar that I can click on to enter a valid date. And you can see I got little red triangles on the top of my start date because that's not a valid date, but that's fine there. Instead of end date, I could also choose to use duration. I could do duration by the number of days. So if this is a five day project, if this is a 12 day project, and as a quick note, when I set this up in the settings of my timeline, I can indicate whether my duration includes weekends or not. The other alternative is to use hours, minutes, and seconds. So that would be four hours, would be four, colon zero, zero, colon zero, zero, 12 hours, etc., etc. So either option, I want to make sure I tell my spreadsheet what the format is. So for duration, hours, minutes, seconds, I'll select the column, go to format, number, and select duration. For days, I would similarly select the column, go to format, number, and choose the number format. Another thing I like to do whenever I'm going to have a repeated value added many times, for example a status, is I like to add data validation to create a drop down menu so that I only have certain choices, for example completed, in progress, delayed and not started, and I know they're always going to be exactly the same with no misspellings. And to do that I would first set up a new sheet on the bottom. You can click on the plus sign here to add a new sheet or go to the one I already created. And in one column I'll add all the values I want to repeat for a specific option. So in here I have all my statuses. Then I go back to the sheet that I want to choose these from, select the range I want to do. I'll do column F here and I'm going to go to data data validation and this time I do want list from a range and I'm going to click on this little select data range icon to then choose what I want. I'm going to navigate over to the field that I filled in, select all of column A, so whenever I add new statuses here they'll also be added. Click OK and then I'll click save and now when I go back to my sheet I'll see all of these cells have drop down menus where I can choose an option from the drop down. I could do the same thing through project phase here. All right, so now that I've got my data set up, I'm going to go ahead and connect it to a timeline now. So I will select those columns and rows that I want in the timeline, and then I'll choose Insert Timeline. So it's walking me through that I want to select data and make sure I have at least one column with a date. And I have that in the selected range, so I'll go ahead and click on OK. And it's going to give me the default view of my data here. And on the right, it'll have settings. If you don't see settings, you can click settings up at the top to open up this tool. First off, you want to confirm that it got the right information for your start date by clicking the drop down and choosing the column for start date. Same thing for end date. And I could switch between choosing end date and the duration here. Uh, one of the benefits of the duration tool is that you can choose to not include the weekends there. So if you put in that it's going to be 10 business days for your duration, then you uncheck the weekends tool and you would be having an accurate timeline view then. But I'm going to have the end date chosen. For my card title, I'll choose task. That's what I want. And down here in the optional tools, I'm going to skip the color for right now and go to card detail. For card detail, I am going to use the details option and you can see that now appears next to the title. And for grouping, I want to choose the project phase so it stacks everything up for me. So I'll choose that project phase and now you can see it adds different sections to my chart here to show all the information. 
Now for color, I choose a column from my option here for color and I'm going to start off by choosing the color column. Now if I go back to my data sheet, you'll see that there's nothing in the color column right now. Once I've chosen a color option, when I click on a card, on the right hand side it opens up details for that card and you can see all the information from the sheet and the card color is empty. But if I want to assign a color from here, because I chose a column in my main sheet that didn't have any formatting applied yet, I can click on this and choose a color from the options for this. And I can repeat that for all my options here, you know, depending on how I want to categorize these. But you can imagine if you have a lot of tasks, manually assigning all the colors, maybe based on the project status, for example, would be time consuming. Once I've assigned the colors in here, when I go back to my sheet, I will see that color column is inheriting the colors I chose in the timeline tool. Another option is if you have a column with status, for example, and you want to assign colors based on the status, you can do two things. You can apply conditional formatting to this column so that when it sees completed, it's green, when it sees not started, it's red, etc, etc. And then if you go into your timeline, you go back to settings, and for color, instead of that color column I added, I'm going to choose the status column, and then it's going to actually inherit the color from the main page. So let's set up some conditional formatting so we can do this. So to do that, I'm going to select the column I want to apply formatting to, in this case, column F. I'm going to go to Format and Conditional Formatting. This opens up a tool on the right, and I already have one rule here, and it's saying that it's going to look at range F2 through F21, and if the cells contain the word completed, it's going to apply green. Let's add another rule like this. I'll click on add another rule and it's pre-populated all the options I had before but this time I want to change completed to in progress. So for in progress I'm going to use yellow. I'll choose add another rule and I'm going to this time choose delayed and for delayed I will choose orange. I'm going to add another rule here and this time I'll choose not started and for not started I will choose a background of red. Once I have all those rules set up and I go back to my timeline, I will see my information is already populated here based on all those colors. A few more things you can do with this tool. Once you have all of the settings just as you like, there's a couple viewing options here. Under the first drop down, I can choose what time period I'm looking at. I can group it up by days all the way up to multi-year. And then I have two view options. I can choose the comfortable view versus a condensed view. And then finally, I can zoom in or out on this through the zoom tool. I can also click on any of the cards to open up the card details on the side. And from there, click on edit data to jump right to that card's row if I need to modify or look at the data in this way. So that is this new timeline feature, which is a really powerful way to take your data that otherwise is very spreadsheet-y and see it in a much more visual way. Definitely try out timelines.